Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a functional ladder. Uh, apologies if this looked a bit clickbaity and you thought it was going to be NPCs actually climbing ladders. It's not. Uh, I don't know how to do animation. I don't know how to tie things into finesse. Nothing like that. It is just as simple as clicking an activator and being sent to the top of the ladder and the bottom of the ladder if you're at the top of it obviously um, it just uses a very simple script that I'll make available and will be in the description down below um, but it is it is pretty cool it, it'll have a nice little sound effect with it and it just gets you from the bottom to the top because it's not really ladders as such in Skyrim um, the ladders that we do have as you can see here that I'm using uh, is one that is usually intended if I, I put it back to its standard rotation uh, it's one that's intended to be sort of walked up but we want one that we'd sort of activate and it puts us up top uh, so, uh, the way that you can do this is uh, pretty simple. I've just set up a, a nice little cell here, and we are going to utilize two trigger boxes, two doorways, and a simple script, and some collision boxes uh, for reasons, because these also need to be used by NPCs, uh, not just the player, because obviously if somebody's following you, uh, or anything like that, or somebody's actually in a place that, that's trying to use it NPC-wise, then they need to get from top to bottom just like you. Uh, so the way that we're going to do this, uh, I've placed this in, like I say, and I'm actually going to do something somewhat interesting here just to make life easier on myself. I'm going to locate a crate. Now, this might seem a bit weird, uh, but I'm going to get myself a crate, plonk it in. I've got snap to grid. I'm just to turn that off. And I'm going to place it about the player's sort of looking height. And then, being clicked on the crate, I'm going to click on the T button up here, like the little box with the T in it. And I'm going to double click and I'm going to do a brand new script. And I'm going to name this whatever I like. I recommend that you also make your own script, although you're using mine, create one with your own name, just that so we don't have a bunch of people on the Nexus using the same script and then potentially overwriting each other if somebody made a change to it. So I'll show you what to do shortly. So I'm going to make a new script. It's going to be DF script ladder. Click OK. Oh, sorry, not a new script. I'm making a trigger box. What the hell am I doing? I'm going to just rename that. <laughs> DF Trigger Ladder is what I'm actually going to want. Uh, I'm going to do no and then yes, just rename it. Uh, so make the trigger first, not the script yet. Uh, make the trigger first, and what you'll have is a trigger that is the shape of that box. So it should have the trigger selected. You'll know if it's got these gizmos. Double tap one on the keyboard just to hide it, and then select the crate and del delete it. Yeah, we'll just delete it for now. Uh, the reason I had the crate is just to easily place a nice trigger box rather than having to sit here resizing all day. So if I do Alt and 1, I can now see the trigger box again. That just reshows everything that you've hidden on the screen. So I've got this nice trigger box here. Uh, what you can do then is you can hold down Control and D to duplicate, and we can move this and put it up top. Now, if you try and move it with the gizmos visible, it will freak out and try and resize. So if you tap on 2, it will hide the gizmo. Click on it again just to make sure it's selected. Hold down Z, click and hold, and then just move it up. And we'll put it to about player height again at the top. And then we can even hold down C in this case to direct it over there and use the sort of hidden gizmos just to shift it over. If you want to show the gizmos again, you tap 2 again. That hides and shows gizmos, which is really handy. And then, as you can see, you can then change them if you need to. So just tap two, because then it will start showing gizmos on everything. You don't want that. It would be a bit annoying. Uh, so we've got a trigger box at the top and at the bottom. And what you now would like to do is add some doors. We'll do the script last. So the doors are going to be working just as any other uh, the doorway that goes between cells or different areas within a cell. Uh, so the one that I find is best simply because it doesn't have a sound. You don't want to select doorways that are going to be hidden by the way. You're not actually going to activate a door. You're going to activate the trigger box that activates the door. Uh, you don't want to use doors that have sounds baked into the NIFs. Um, there's not really an easy way unless you go into the NIFs and know where you're looking to know if something's got one of those. So what I do and what I recommend is just search for BYOH. Oh, lovely. I haven't got Hearthfire loaded up, so I'm going to have to get creative uh, and use a different door. Uh, so we want to go under World Objects and Door. <laughs> I haven't got the thing I usually use. Maybe we'll try a, a trap door and, and hope that that, that kind of works. Uh, otherwise, the, the trap doors in Build Your Own Home in Hearthfire DLC are usually perfect for this. Um, considering most mods require all of it anyway because um, a lot of people build in 
in the 64-bit creation kit anyway and would just have that available. Uh, I am going to try... Um, or alternatively, what may work... I'm just wondering if it will work. I have my doubts is using one of these. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just play it safe to make it easy here. I want something flat like this. You'll see why. Uh, I'm gonna use ship trapdoor. I'm gonna bring that in, and I'm gonna place that down, and I'm gonna just put it a little bit under the floor, right next to where I would expect to be standing to go up the ladder. And then I'm going to Control and C to copy it, go up to the top, Control and V to paste, and I'm going to position that in about the same place. And what this means is an NPC can actually activate that without being able to activate it, because NPCs don't work by walking up to things and clicking the A button or the E button if you're on mouse and keyboard. Uh, NPCs just have a, a range that they can activate doors. So this will allow NPCs to use it, but it won't allow the player to use it because the player doesn't want to see the door. They just want to see and use the trigger. Uh, so there's something else we'll have to do with the triggers in a moment as well. Uh, but if you click on the trapdoors, just to make sure, because sometimes you can actually look past the floor and you can still activate these through the floor, you want to click on the C in the little box up here, that nice little symbol. And this will give you a collision box. Now, I'm not going to bother messing with it, but you might want to just uh, tweak those gizmos so that it's not... Um, you know, showing any sections that you might be able to activate and get it to cover all of it, make sure it does. And you're going to want to do that for both of them. So if you click on this one as well and you do the same, it just makes sure that if they were looking here, they're not actually going to be able to activate it, the player, that they're going to hit a, a collision box, hopefully, and they'll never know it's there. It's meant to be a secret. So the triggers now need to link to those doors. We'll actually link the doors together first out of the way. So to link doors, very easy. Uh, double click on the one. Click on teleport, tick the teleport option, go to the other door, and let's just hide some stuff out of the way with the double tapping one. Select reference in render window and then double click on the other door. If it doesn't let you do that, you may need to just put a reference editor ID like ref ladder 01, ref ladder 02, or up and top uh, on there. But usually with doors, it lets you select them perfectly fine. Click OK, you'll know if it's worked because you'll get these nice markers. And then you just want to use the gizmos and snap the grid. Uh, to get this sort of budged out of the way. I just do Alt and 1 to hide again, F to floor that down. Uh, and as you can see, this is where you're going to appear when you use the doorway. Uh, or in this case, what we think is a ladder. And I'm just going to position that one. So that's really neat. Then you want to link these to the doors. So link ref them. Uh, before we do that, you want to click on Primitive and Player Activation. This makes sure that, that trigger can be activated, uh, otherwise you won't actually see an option on it. Now, there is a bit of a bug with these. Uh, in this particular instance, and in a lot of instances, you'll see that you have like uh, zero rotation on these things. You're going to want to put a 1 on the end. You're going to want to replace a zero and put a one on the end on all of them and slightly offset it. It's just a weird bug that if it's on a perfect sort of angle, it sometimes doesn't actually give you the option to activate it. Uh, the other thing I want to do is just edit the base of that trigger and I forgot to give it a name. So I just want to call it ladder and then I'm going to put use. So rather than say activate ladder, we can put use if you wanted. And what we might do actually, we'll put climb. So we can say climb ladder. That'll be a lot better. So we've got the primitive to activate it. We've offset it slightly for the bug. We've given it a name. Um, and then the other thing that you want to do is click link reference. And you want to double click in there. Choose the reference. And you want to link it to the door that it's closest to. And what that will do is activate that once we've added the script. I'm going to do that in a moment. I'm just going to do the same for this trigger. So go into primitive, player activation. No need to edit it again because they're using the same base object. Make sure that all these are set to one. And then I'm just going to add that link reference in. And it's going to link reference this door. That's what we're going to want to do. Uh, I'm just going to save this mod just in case I lose it. So DF ladder, that's all I'm going to call it. Because uh, I don't really want to uh, lose that. I mean, DF test cell that I made as well. Uh, and then you're going to need a script. So if you double click on here, edit the base and add a new script, give it a few seconds. Sometimes you'll get this little warning the first time that you open this up in the creation kit. Uh, just click yes to all and ignore it. That's what we do with most errors. You should get this little box pop up. 
uh, double click and do new script. I recommend that you give this um, a script name of your own and then copy and paste my script in. I'll show you what part to do. Uh, and then I'm just going to call it DF script ladder. There we go. Give it a few seconds. And then if you right click and do edit source, you'll see you get the editor in the creation kit. If you're not using Sublime Text, Notepad++ or another editor, then I strongly recommend that you go and check that video out. I'll, I'll put it up top here somewhere so you can click on that. Uh, it basically gets Sublime set up so that you can use that. And what you'll get when you right click and do open in external editor is you can be set up so that you can use Sublime text for scripts. Now, hopefully the last one that I had open was the exact script that I need for this. So it's not actually a ladder script. This can be used for a lot of other things. Uh, well, the script we're actually going to use is this activate link ref script. Now, there are a number of these default in the creation kit. Um, but they they're all they all have like conditions and things that we don't really need. This one kind of ties in beautifully with what we need it for. Uh, so this can be used in other instances. You may find a use for it if you can, uh, you know, understand it and use it. Um, but it has an option so that it will only do it once. So it will only activate the link reference of the trigger once. Uh, there's also an option for done, which will make sure it ticks that off for, for that. Uh, and then there's also an is trigger. So if you say that this is... Um, if you tick this as true, then it will actually disable itself after it's been used as well, so it can't be used again. In this instance, the defaults are false. So equals false, and these are the tool tips. That's where they're grayed out, just to let you know what they are when you hover over them. Uh, they're false by default, so we're not actually going to change anything. We're literally just going to add the script. So what I want to do is copy this, and I recommend that you grab the script uh, from the description down below. You do the same as I'm doing here. Copy everything other than the top line, because this is specific to this script. Click on DF script ladder, you'll see that this is specific to the ladder script. And then just go down a couple of lines and just paste that in and then just compile it. I've got a little shortcut uh, on my keyboard for that, uh, but you should know how to, to compile it in your own editor. Uh, and then what we've got, we'll close that and we should have the script here. So if I opened it in here, you'll see the script's in there. And all it's going to do is on activation, um, it's basically going to run all through the conditions that are all false at the moment. And eventually it's just going to activate. The key bit here is the self.get link reference, the link reference, that's where we're linking it to the, the ladders. Uh, and it's going to activate and it's going to do it with the player. It's going to blame the player. So it's going to make the player activate it. And property wise, you don't really have to fill anything in. You can, if you wanted to have this disable if you wanted it a one use ladder maybe you'd want the ladder to snap and break or something like that you could add to disable the ladder you could add an explosion effect if you know how to do some nice scripting where it's just a poof of smoke and then you could just have like a mesh of, of ladder parts on the floor or just have it disappear uh, you could do stuff like that and if that was the case and you only wanted it one use so it's like oh, I've climbed the ladder now it's broken I need to find a way back down if you want to get creative uh, you can use this to say do once and disable the trigger you just set them as as true but in this instance it's going to be just a standard ladder it's not going to explode or anything uh, so we're going to leave that uh, just as it is and just add the script so you'd want to like i say make your own script copy and paste it in uh, it just makes sure that it doesn't conflict with anyone else that might want to use this script as well uh, and make adjustments to it uh, so we will tick OK on there, OK on there, and in theory, that is just about it. Uh, you should be able to activate this trigger. Uh, it will link the door, and uh, then the door will just do as the in-game system does, and it will shift you to the other location, and you can see it uh, top and bottom. You can even get to the top, jump down, and then reuse it to get back up. It's perfectly fine. Uh, it should, uh, should work nicely. So what we'll do now, we'll just save that. We'll go in-game, and we'll make sure that it works. Okay, so one thing I almost forgot uh, is also what we want to do is click on these doors, edit the bases, and you're going to want to add a sound. So you'll see that what it's doing is it's not using um, any sounds attached to the, the object itself on the NIF. It's using wood trap door open. And what you want to do is type in ladder, and you can actually use DRS ladder wood. And then for close, select it close it and it will wipe it off and remove it from there because we don't want to use that. Uh, click OK, OK and then save and then we'll dive in game uh, and that will do the job and that will make sure you get a nice ladder sound and it will take you from top to bottom. Okay so here we are in the main menu so I'm just going to do DF test cell whoops 
There we go. And as you can see, we're in the cell here. We've got our ladder. If you look down, go into first person, crouch, move around a bit. You cannot activate anything underneath the floor. So the door, basically. Uh, if you stand up and look, you can see that you've got the option to climb ladder. If that's not there and it's invisible, you can't seem to see it. Just double check that you've got the primitive tick box uh, ticked and also check that you have offset this a little bit because you might be experiencing the bug. Uh, so if you click on climb ladder, you'll see you get a nice little ladder sound sent up to the top. You can go back down again. You have the same situation up there. And you can also jump down because it just works like a door, basically. And then you can just reuse it again. If you were to do a uh, toggle collision, TCL, and went underneath, you can then, of course, get past the collision and activate it. And you'll see that all it does, it, it just activates a door. That's all the trigger box is doing. It's just activating the door and then working as normal. And we didn't get other sounds off the NIF or anything like that. So, perfect. Okay, so there we go. That's just about it for animated ladders. I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section down below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you have not already. Uh, you can, of course, check out my community Discord if you want help with things. A lot of nice, kind people on there, always willing to help each other out. That bird I'm going to shoot. Um, <laughs> also, check out my website for the rest of my work at www.darkfox127.co.uk. And uh, that is it. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will speak to you all next time.